Hey everyone, this is Ryan here, and welcome back to our Periodontic series. This will be the last video in our series concerning new content to cover for the board exam, but we will have a bonus video with practice questions to test everything that we talked about. So we covered treatments a patient could receive at the clinic, and we'll finish up our series talking about measures a patient can take at home to resolve and prevent periodontal disease altogether. So of course, brushing your teeth is important, but the most important thing about it is how you do so. And the BASS method is taught at most dental schools and is also considered by board examiners to be the best method of toothbrushing. So this method involves circular brushing where bristles are placed at the gingival margin at a 45 degree angle to the tooth and the bristles extend about half a millimeter subgingivally to effectively disrupt plaque in that area. So instead of aggressively scrubbing back and forth, this method is a bit more gentle and much more effective at actually removing plaque without causing gingival recession and abrasion of tooth structure. So the 45 degree angle, it's not important to be exactly at 45 degrees, but the idea is to have the bristles angled so they can enter just barely into the gingival sulcus that when you brush up and out, you can actually disrupt the plaque that's sitting in that subgingival area. So a very effective way, the most effective method for toothbrushing. Also, you wanna use soft nylon bristle brushes that do not tend to traumatize gingival tissues as much as hard bristled brushes. And this isn't too, too critical, but they say to replace brushes every three months. I think every six months is perfect, perfectly reasonable. And this is what you can see with a patient who brushes aggressively and or uses a hard bristle brush. This amount of gingival recession and tooth abrasion can be common in a patient who is using an incorrect toothbrushing method. All right, and flossing is of course very important as well. There are some articles a while back that said flossing doesn't prevent cavities, but we know for sure that flossing prevents gum disease, and flossing is absolutely critical as part of proper routine oral hygiene. And not just flossing, but flossing correctly. So I'm gonna leave a link in the description to an ADA handout that talks about this flossing method, and I'll talk about it as well in the video. So they say to have about a foot and a half or 18 inches of floss wrapped around the middle fingers of each hand, and each end of the floss is held tightly between your thumb and second finger. So I find that any other way of holding the floss can be a little bit cumbersome, and this way, you can access each region of your mouth pretty well. So the common method is just to click the floss up and down between the, the teeth, but that both traumatizes the papilla and misses the plaque down in each sulcus. So the idea is to curve the floss into a C shape against the side of the tooth, and then to rub gently up and down along the side of each tooth. So you make a C this way, and then you make a C the other way to get each surface of each tooth here. And also, don't forget to floss behind your back teeth because of course plaque will be accumulating there and can be easy to forget about. So this is called the C-shaped floss method and again would be considered the most ideal and beneficial way of flossing in terms of the board exam. Also, the water pick is one of the home water irrigation systems, and they're designed to flush out gross food debris and reduce bacterial load on the gingiva, not biofilm or plaque on the tooth surface. So the water pick is a nice adjunct to the previous things, toothbrushing and flossing, but it does not remove plaque from teeth. So in this regard, it actually does not help prevent periodontal disease because it's not targeting the initiating factor. 
which is plaque on the tooth. And then some epidemiology facts to consider and know for the board exam. So this is the general pattern from most prevalent to least prevalent in terms of the types of periodontitis that you see. So chronic periodontitis is the most common, followed by localized aggressive, generalized aggressive, and lastly, refractory cases of periodontitis. I can almost guarantee that you will get a question on this, that the most prevalent group that gets periodontitis, they might say periodontitis, particularly chronic periodontitis, is most common in which ethnicity or which group, and the answer is males of African descent. Not a coincidence that diabetes is also most commonly found in this population. So definitely something to know, a niche fact to know for the board exam. And lastly, the maintenance schedule. Now these are things we already covered in previous videos, but I just wanted to quickly rehash them here. So the periodontal reevaluation should occur four to eight weeks after phase one non-surgical therapy is completed and the periodontal maintenance schedule. You should see a patient for visits every three months for the first year, and then after that, they can come in for three-month recalls, four-month recalls, or six-month recalls, with more frequent visits being for patients with more severe cases of periodontitis. So patient compliance with oral hygiene and the proper frequency of maintenance visits have profound effects on disease and health. And in, periodon in periodontics especially, patient motivation and compliance is as important, if not more important, than what you do in the clinic. So thanks so much for watching, everyone. That concludes our series on periodontics. Definitely stay tuned for our bonus video with all our practice questions. And thanks again so much for watching. We'll see you all in the next video.